let's see. Uh, I think there's a, a couple other things we want to pull up here real quick. Um, go ahead and pull up the next one. So Tesla has revealed FSC beta users have 30.31 accidents per 1 million miles, while autopilot engage uh, 1.18 accidents per 1 million miles, much better than the 1.53 industry average. So it's sort of like FSD beta users get into five times less accidents than the average driver in the United States, at least. Yep. Uh, this is another, this is not well known at all because folks assume the opposite, that these things are going to run over your child, as uh, Dan O'Dowd would say. Uh, any context you want to give here? This, da this data is really only 14 or 45 days old. They first started sharing the FSD beta mile crash, you know, per million mile data about, I think on the March 1st during the, what was it, the investor day, I think. Um, mm -hmm. So I think they started doing that because there was a lot of calls from in the community that Tesla needs to share this data so we can have some context on how safe FSD beta is. Because I think there was this notion that FSD beta is really dangerous. You have people like Dan O'Dowd coming out and saying, look, it like hits kids and all this. But really, it's actually quite a lot safer. Um, I'll have to I haven't dug deep in how they actually got to that data. Um, I'm sure it's a little bit biased somewhat, but I've tried FSD beta. You know, I've, I think I've driven probably four or five thousand miles in FSD beta in the last um, 10 months. And it's the, the improvements are incredible. V11 itself is probably the biggest step change I've seen with the version yet. And I'm having multiple zero disengagement drives all the time. It, it's quite common now. So that's good to see. Yeah. And uh, there was a little tease from Elon today on Twitter saying that 11.4 uh, is even better. So I'm, I'm curious to see how that goes. For me, it's like I couldn't agree more. That I've stopped driving. I just I just don't drive anymore. I just yeah. let the car do its thing. And uh, it's passed the wife test. So I can now use it at any point. And my wife is like, yeah, I could trust the car. And I have my parents in the car and my mom was in the back. And I asked her, I'm like, what do you think about this? She's like, I actually trust this more than most people because I can see that I can see everything. And so I trust the system. And I'm like, okay, that's... Yeah, you can see what the brain of the car is sort of thinking on the visualization on the screen. It's true, yeah. Yeah, it creates a lot of trust. It's like, how can it create trust between the individual, like the driver or the passenger and the car? And I think I think that the more and more that it does maneuvers that inspire confidence uh, that the driver can indeed trust the car, I think the adoption for it will skyrocket. And uh, they just have to make it so that it's at a... Uh, at an acceptable price point. And I'm yeah. curious to see when that's going to happen. What do you think that will happen, by the way? When do you think it's going to be widely adopted? Uh, I, I don't like that Elon said, like, <laughs> again, for the seventh year in a row. Like, hey, it's <laughs> coming this year, guys. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, I think just let, you know, let's just let it speak for itself at this point. Um, yeah. I think we're getting close. Because, like, if anyone that's used, at, you know, V11.3, whatever it is, I mean, we're, we're almost there. Like, we're, I think more and more people are posting their videos and having more and more fewer engagements drives. Um, and I think by the end of this year, it's going to be really good. Of course, a lot of people think 15,000 is too much. Um, I'm not in that camp. I think it's a really fun tool to use while driving. And it also just makes it, I think, a lot more enjoyable in my opinion. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see where that price parity is because they haven't raised the price in a while. That probably tells me the take rate isn't like insanely good, um, but I could be wrong on that. Of course, I don't have data to back that up. Yeah, I'm curious to see where they go. I I, I expect them to do the upfront cost of the fifteen thousand sort of thing that they have. I'm wondering if that's going to be, it's going to come with a license to be able to add the car to the robo taxi network, and then the monthly subscription is for somebody that just wants to use their car to drive them around, but they can't add it to the network. I, I wonder think, if it's something like that. I think Tesla should really beef up the referral program and include some sort of FSD beta like trial mm. or in that, because I think a lot of people would be shocked how good it is, but they just don't want to pony up the money or even know that the monthly subscription exists. Um, so that'd be interesting to see them do that. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, let's do the, I think there's one more we want to hit. And then if, if okay with you for the last five minutes or so, Sawyer, we'll do some, uh, Q and a with, uh, with our comments. Is that okay? Yeah. We'll see what sure. kind of comments we can come up. Uh, so, and this is a uh, slide 15 from the, from the actual report. Tesla produced and delivered over 1.3 million EVs globally in 2022. And then on the right, there is a graph that shows, uh, Tesla's yearly sales from, 2017 through 2022 so the darker the lines get the it's the newer year 
and you can see that it's sort of gotten bigger. Then you have BYD, Volkswagen, uh, Hyundai, so on and so forth. What The one big takeaway here, and I know this, but I don't think anyone else, barely anybody else does, especially outside of the sort of this bubble that we're in, is that even, even though BYD reports a lot of sales, uh, it's not EV sales. It's actually uh, hybrid sales, gas car sales, and EV sales. And yeah, the so, way they report it, they say like it's electrified, quote unquote, which is super yep. confusing for the headline because people will say, like, is that a full electric vehicle or is that a hybrid? When really they should just be saying battery electric vehicles and they're not outselling Tesla with those currently. That's correct. Uh, any additional context you want to give on this uh, on this graph right here? Not too much. I think I think Ford is probably going to move up that list decently here pretty soon. Um, I, yeah, BYD and the Tesla, that, that's a heated competition, I think, in China. Um, but, boy, boy, Toyota at the bottom there, that's just pathetic. Like, <laughs> they need to step their game up. Yeah, man. And, and Jaguar sort of is shrinking. That's yep. that's the other one that I think is kind of shopping, shocking is like in a in a segment that is exploding in the EV car, the Jaguar is actually shrinking. So, actually, know, GM pace. Should, yeah, GM should be a lot higher, too, because they got into this game like eight years ago with the Bolt, which funny enough, they're now discontinuing. Um, yeah, they should be way higher on the list. I think they sort of stumbled their feet for years, um, especially Toyota. Like Toyota has been so bad. But yeah. I, with the new CEO, we'll see if the strategy shifts and they can get going. Out of all these sort of automakers, and let's put sort of Tesla aside since they're pure EV, which one of these do you think has the biggest chance of success to actually, let's say, be a huge player by the end of the decade? I want to say Ford or VW. Um, I think VW has a big uh, group of products that are pretty good. Um, but I think Ford, I think Jim, I think Jim Farley's like a pretty decent CEO. They've, been, like, they've made some horrible missteps in recent years. But I, I think Jim Farley's at least honest about it, whereas Mary Barr, I don't think is as much. Um, and I think we'll see Ford probably step up their production capacity quite a bit in the coming years. Nothing to what Tesla will do, of course, but I think it'll yeah. be better than a lot of people expect. Yeah, the, the one trend that I'm starting to see, so I, I looked at GM's earnings today, and I think it's starting to really become clear that their ability, I'm going to use GM as an example, to really generate profits while their most profitable segments shrink in the pickup truck and the gas car. And they are ramping up their money losing business for at least for the next few years in the EV segment. How those two things sort of transition is going to be so incredibly important for these legacy car companies, because if it's not done right and they whiff on the EV or their gas car business shrinks too fast, it's over. It's like yeah. it's it's gonna it's gonna require chapter eleven. They're gonna they have, have to be to... really careful, and it's a really yeah. delicate game, especially with their dealership networks, which I think they want to get away from. But how do you do that? I don't know. Um, it's a delicate balance, and I, I don't expect them to make money from EVs for like years to come, especially GM. I think um, yeah. it's gonna be a tough tough balance for sure. For sure.